As the Catechism teaches about the sacraments of the church, there's a little section, a very short section, but an important one, entitled Liturgical Diversity and the Unity of the Mystery. It's very, very important because as we consider the life of the church, and we studied this in the first part of the Catechism when we talked about the church being one, one holy Catholic and apostolic, and we said that the church is united in Christ, but not necessarily uniform in her expression. And this is true, especially with the liturgical life of the church. There is legitimate and very rich diversity in the expressions that take place in the various churches uh, in the sacred liturgy. Uh, the same Paschal mystery is celebrated in every place and in every time, uh, from the time of the apostles until our own day and age, uh, even though the forms of that celebration are diverse. This is something that we know from our study of history, and this is something that we know from our participation in the church today. Uh, no one liturgical tradition can exhaust the Paschal mystery. No one liturgical tradition can exhaust the mystery of Christ. The history of the blossoming and development of these rites witness to a remarkable complementarity. Uh, diverse liturgical traditions have arisen by the very reason of the church's mission in diverse places, cultures, and times. Uh, as the church grew and blossomed throughout the world uh, in different centers, uh, the liturgical rites would be celebrated in different ways. And so there would be certain expressions that were offered in Jerusalem, uh, certain ones in, uh, in Byzantium or Constantinople, uh, certain ones in, uh, in Rome, uh, and others in the different liturgical centers. The Latin rites of the church uh, refer to the Roman rite according to both its extraordinary form and its ordinary form. Uh, the Ambrosian rite uh, celebrated in Milan uh, and rites of certain religious orders such as the Dominican rite and other local rites. These would be considered the Latin rites. The Eastern rites include the Byzantine, uh, the Alexandrian or Coptic rite, uh, or, uh, the origin being in Egypt, the Syriac rite, the Armenian rite, the Maronite rite, the Chaldean rite. The church holds all lawfully recognized rites to be of equal right and dignity and she wishes to preserve them in the future and to foster them in every way. It's a good thing for every Catholic to be familiar with the variety of liturgical rites. And it's really something that is very, very important to experience uh, so that we might know that our own rite is not the only valid expression and in fact, sometimes participating in another rite of the church can enrich our appreciation of the rite that we are most familiar with. Liturgy and culture is a topic addressed by the Catechism. Uh, the celebration of the liturgy, therefore, should correspond to the genius and culture of different peoples. It must be proclaimed, celebrated, and lived in all cultures in such a way that they themselves are not abolished by it, but redeemed and fulfilled. It is with and through their own human culture, assumed and transfigured by Christ, that the multitude of God's children has access to the Father in order to glorify him in the one spirit. In the liturgy, above all that of the sacraments, there is an immutable part a part that is divinely instituted and of which the church is the guardian. And parts of that can be changed, which the church has the power and on occasion also the duty to adapt to the cultures 
of recently evangelized peoples. So as we think of the liturgy of the church, we know that there are some unchanging parts, some things that are constitutive to the liturgy, and we also know that there are some aspects that have been changed down through the ages uh, according to uh, the participation of various cultures in the life of the church. Diversity must not damage unity. It must express only fidelity to the common faith, to the sacramental signs that the church has received from Christ, and to hierarchical communion. Cultural adaptation also requires a conversion of heart and even where necessary, a breaking with ancestral customs incompatible with the Catholic faith. These adaptations in the sacred liturgy take place always under the guidance of the church's pastors and in keeping with the hierarchical order of the church.